So coming up right now in what we've got going on here is uh, I'd like to introduce you to one of the adjudicators. Steve Meyer, would you join us, please? Uh, it's great to have Steve here. Steve is uh, currently finishing his, his doctorate at the University of Michigan, and uh, he's been uh, moving around a little bit in another interim position this year at the Potsdam uh, Crane School of Music and uh, doing a wonderful job up there, I'm certain. Great to be here, Joe. Thank you. You bet. You know, this for those of you that don't may may not realize, uh, Steve has uh, has written a, uh, a quite popular book on the subject of uh, of of getting things pulled together with uh, the uh, uh, music education in the schools. He's done clinics at the Midwest uh, Band and Orchestra Clinic in Chicago, and has been very active in what's going on not only within the entire band activity, but it's certainly involved with the marching band activity as well. Yeah, it's been a, a huge honor. But tell us tell us about your, your progress here. So um, this, this book came about, it was a, an idea that I had after reading John Williamson's original book, Rehearsing the Band. Yes. And um, I was using it as part of a music education class at the University of South Carolina. And I often, as I was reading it, kind of wondered how high school directors would respond to the same questions, how they prepare for rehearsal, how they study scores, uh, and the different techniques they use with high school students to develop tone, technique, intonation, balance, musicianship. Um, often we think with collegiate directors, they don't have to work on it, and high school directors is a different beast. So I gathered, assembled some of the, the finest directors in the country um, those that have achieved a, a level of musical excellence yes. at a very high level and was able just to ask them a bunch of questions. It was an incredible opportunity. I learned more um, than I could have imagined in well, those interviews. And the collection is just outstanding. Yeah, it's great. It really we, is. We have you know Greg Bim, uh, Roy Holder, David Vandewalker, Gary Markham, mm -hmm. a whole list of um, incredible directors. You bet. Great, great professionals in this business or just left this business and uh, with wonderful ideas about how to make band a better thing. Yeah. And uh, that, you know, I've known those folks for years and years and years. And it's just, it was great to see that in writing because I think it really does put everything in perspective for those who are just joining us in this career field of, of making things a... Uh, a, a, a bit of a there's a solve a solving issue right. where we we don't we've got all kinds of problems but we're now we've got a bit of a of a clue as to how to go about this yeah. and they were helping helpful with that and great yeah and ever since the book came out it's been really great to hear from directors across the country some directors in Thailand have bought it and it, it's become a a resource so if you're having trouble with tone you have eleven different people who all have the same philosophy but eleven different approaches that you can try with your own right, students. Right. So I, it's been a kind of great resource um, for both concert and marching band. It kind of transfers. Oh, it's to been each it's been terrific. Well, it does. <clears throat> it does. That it was it was one of those those things that for years and years people wondered how do you make a great championship marching band? Number one, teach them how to play. Of course, music. You know, play, that's play, what play it is. Music. Sure, sure. <clears throat> so. As we as we look at, at at all of that now, what are you what are you judging today? I'm going to be looking at music performance and music effect. Uh huh. Um, so one of the things that I, I try and look at, especially with music effect, it took me a long time as a young director to understand that category, and that is a different you know how it affects the audience, how you react to a, a show, um, and so you're also you're looking at originality, you're looking at creativity, you're looking at how they use the stage, how they use the field, and how the music integrates with all of that. And then one of the things that I also look at that I want to um, encourage directors to look at is also the architecture of each of the movements and of the show as a whole. So one of the things that I did when I was teaching is I would graph out the show, and I would have the students graph out the show. What are, where are our highest points in the show? Where are the lowest points? You know, are we getting to those points and are we coming away from them? A lot of bands that um, we see especially this time of year, have a great um, way of getting to arrival moments, but not necessarily connecting the thread. One of the analogies I always used was a roller coaster. You know, you want to sure. take the audience on a roller coaster ride, but you don't want to have any gaps in the track on the roller coaster ride, or we know what happens. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And a lot of people will go up the hill and down, but they'll never finish the track and keep it going. Right. Well, I think that's, a, that's an important point. Yeah. I think that when we look at show design in itself, we all have a pretty good idea of where those high points are going to be. But it, getting to the next one is the most difficult. And getting, yeah, and getting out of it. And then how you create, keep the audience on the edge of their seat, right. and keep the emotion going, both musically and visually. 
Um, and so a lot of the different performance aspects come into that. Um, and so one of the things you know, I, I want to stress to directors, especially this time of year, it's kind of a pivotal time, midway point in the season, we're starting to perform a lot, our sh the show a lot more, is just to be mindful of thinking about the end goal. And often this time of year, we really have to ask ourselves and question what we're doing on a daily basis to help us sure. reach that end sure. goal. We know a lot of the times we do the same fundamental warm up. We'll do the same scale, the same Remington exercise, et cetera, et cetera. But is that really serving the purpose for our show and what the students need for the show? The same thing goes with the visual idea. Um, so just really looking at the, what issues we have. You know, is it dynamics? Is it articulation? Is it the adding crescendos and decrescendos and then making that part of the fundamental routine? Absolutely. Not just doing it every single Absolutely. day. Absolutely. And that will help us achieve the end goal. Um, the last thing we want to have happen is any of those warm-ups to become robotic. Right, exactly. We want them engaged in it, and we want them to find a reason that why we're doing this. Exactly. So if I, if I get the commentary you know, from a judge or somebody that I'm having issues with balance or blend or articulation, and then I'm going to incorporate that into my warm-up for that sure. day or for that week. Sure. Um, as we start to refine, now that it's on the field and they're getting comfortable with it, uh, making sure that we're putting all of these elements together at this point in the season. Well, that's great. And I know that your commentary is going to be absolutely so valuable to them because I, you know, I think that, that all of us, to a certain extent, we, have, we get into this business for a longer period of time and we don't understand the matter of general effect to that. It, we're always looking for what are we doing with equipment, what are we doing with high points, sewing all of that together to make it something that's sensible, you're bringing that to this, to this evaluation and that really helps. Yeah, the story that you're telling with the students and the journey you're taking on is, is an important part that we want. Certainly Any is. musical performance doesn't have to be marching band, it could be concert band as well. It certainly Any is. Piece. So tell me, tell me about, about your, your, uh, your, your progress in your doctorate. <laughs> It, we're it we're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in my third year, so the, I spent the first two years at the University of Michigan doing my coursework yeah. um, and being a graduate student there. And then our third year is our dissertation recitals. Okay. So I'm able to do that while serving as the visiting director of bands at Crane. So okay. the concerts and I'm doing at Crane. You were once at, at South Carolina, too. I was. I taught for yeah. a year at the University of South Carolina right. after I left Texas. So it's been a great environment in trying um, to figure out how I can adapt teaching from high school to what was needed at the collegiate level, the differences between the two. Yeah. Um, and what and did you I, discover? I discovered that, you know, the thing that I miss the most about teaching high school is the journey that you go on with the kids. Um, you start in August and they, you're by taking one step forward and playing one note or if right. you're, um, and then it's a three month journey and the payoff and the reward that you have at the end of that three month journey is the thing I miss the most about high school teaching. Yeah. The collegiate level, on the other hand, you have, I just did a concert last night, I had six rehearsals on that concert for 45 minutes of music. Right. So it's a different level of preparation, it's a different yes, level of musicality and, um, that you have to bring just as rewarding in a very different way. Um, and the, one, the thing that I really love the most about teaching at the collegiate environment is teaching teachers. I've, I've been so lucky in my experiences with David at Harrison and in Texas, um, and, and being able to share those tools of the, the opportunities I have with younger teachers has been really, really rewarding. Yeah, that, that is exactly one of those, one of those elements that I've, I've felt all my career. And that is that teaching at the high school level was incredible joy, but I found that the students responded the same way at a different level of maturity mm -hmm. at the collegiate level, but teaching teachers was this was all about being professionals in training and that we talked about professional things, not only about the way that they talked, but the way they walked and that the way they conducted themselves throughout mm -hmm. the professional uh, track that they were on. So Absolutely. it's good. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's, it's a joy to watch them go out and teach other students. You bet. And to kind of cast a wider web. Oh, you bet. And that's great. Yeah. We're proud of what you're doing. Well, thank no you. question it's an honor about to be it. Here and an honor to talk to you. It's great to have you here. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Very